Yeah, my enthusiasm right now is uh, for lightning development. I really think the most exciting thing going on in the world of technology is the lightning protocol. The ability to move Bitcoin, you know, at the speed of light, friction free, uh, no transaction or, or de minimis transaction cost. And the, all, the, the, the appeal of lightning is not just that you could scale up Bitcoin to billions of people. And it's not just that you can drive the transaction cost to near nothing. Michael Saylor's microstrategy is most notable in the cryptocurrency community for being the first publicly listed company to put some Bitcoin on its balance sheet. Since it made the bold move in August 2020, the software company has been the focus of millions of people worldwide, from the media to Bitcoin maximalists, cryptocurrency investors, and other big money investors looking to invest in the crypto space. So far, MicroStrategy has bet almost $4 billion on Bitcoin. Though the bet has not paid off as expected, Sailor and the software firm are not backing down. According to the executive chairman and former CEO, the firm is now making additional bets on the Lightning Network, a layer two payment protocol layered on top of the Bitcoin network. Saylor recently addressed the audience at the Baltic Honey Badger Conference in the capital city of Riga in Latvia. During the video call appearance, the American entrepreneur and proud owner of over 17,000 Bitcoins spoke about everything from his journey to discovering Bitcoin and how far he has come on the journey. Most importantly, he spoke about the Lightning Network, describing it as the most exciting development in the world of technology. After spending $4 billion on Bitcoin, Michael Saylor is apparently making further bets on the world's largest cryptocurrency network. Please watch, share, and like this video as Michael Saylor speaks about the next stage of his Bitcoin story. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more crypto-related videos. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. The ethos of Bitcoin is is go very carefully and and uh, don't move fast on the base layer without universal consensus. But in Lightning, you can move much more aggressively, developing functionality, and you and you can take more risks with the Lightning protocol, and you can take more risks with the applications that are on top of Lightning and uh, build more functionality and build more performance than uh, you can in the underlying Bitcoin layer. So MicroStrategy has got some R&D projects going on right now where we're working on uh, enterprise applications of Lightning, enterprise Lightning wallets, enterprise Lightning servers, enterprise authentication, things that would um, yeah, things that would appeal to a company. If you wanted to roll out Lightning uh, to 100,000 employees in a day, right? how would you do it? If you wanted to give a Lightning wallet to 10 million customers overnight, how would you do it? And uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, enterprise development uh, capability in that area because we've been doing enterprise software for 30 years. And so we're working to marry our enterprise software development with the lightning opportunity. It's still, I would, I would characterize it as R and D stage. It's still early days because we need to see, you know, what comes out of it, what products evolve and whether they're commercially viable and, and how it will be received by the market. So, um, I'm not really ready to announce anything more concrete than that, but, uh, I do think, uh, that the future, it, uh, the future of the Bitcoin network, all the future technology innovation is uh, lightning based. And, uh, and anybody that can actually develop software applications that integrate with a lightning protocol has an extraordinary opportunity. That's where I'd be focusing my, my venture capital and my investment right now. Sailor is not the only one excited about the prospects of the Bitcoin lightning network. Many other market participants, including macro guru Lynn Alden, have spoken about the importance of this important layer two protocol, describing it as an important part of the next phase of cryptocurrency development and adoption. Let us know what you think about the Lightning Network in the comments section below. During his broadcast, Saylor also speaks about his Bitcoin journey. As he explains, the journey has been quite an eye-opener for the entrepreneur. Saylor explained that he started with the intention of saving his company from the US dollar, 
which is fast losing its value mostly due to the Federal Reserve's reckless monetary policies. But to Saylor, Bitcoin is now much more than a means to save microstrategy from the declining dollar. Please watch as he explains what he has learned since 2020 and the various stages of being a Bitcoin investor. When we first embraced Bitcoin, it was a defensive strategy. Uh, we were trying to avoid getting destroyed by the inflation that was coming. And we realized that we couldn't just sit with $500 million of cash uh, on the balance sheet. So that, I mean, the first, the first view was how do we avoid having our treasury assets melt away in a market that's just getting increasingly difficult and hostile? I think that the second stage was opportunistic. Bitcoin's an extraordinary opportunity and, um, and we can uh, increase the size of our balance sheet and we can do some interesting things like issue convertible debt in order to acquire Bitcoin. And, uh, and we can build uh, up uh, an interesting business that we didn't really know was there before. I think the third uh, stage is really strategic, right? The Bitcoin strategy, we're, we're going to acquire and hold Bitcoin, you know, consistently, uh, aggressively, whenever we see um, an opportunity that makes sense for the shareholders. So that, that's the corporate, uh, the corporate evolution. I would say uh, from a personal philosophical point of view, um, I started looking for uh, a better goal than gold, uh, a digital goal to store a value. And, and uh, I would say that's like, uh, you know, I describe different types of investors. You've got the deniers, people don't believe that Bitcoin is real. You've got the skeptics, you know, people that, uh, you know, that uh, just don't, uh, don't think it's going to work. They think the government's going to ban it. And then you've got the traders who think it's, a, it's an uncorrelated asset or it's a correlated asset. I would say I came in as a trader. Uh, this is an uncorrelated asset and it doesn't make sense to invest the company's treasuries in the stock market or invest the company's treasuries in art collections or invest the company in, in real estate. So here's, a, here's an asset that it makes sense to invest in. I think that that's stage three. Stage four is to be a technocrat. That's when you say, oh, this is a digital monetary asset and it's a digital monetary network. And, uh, and I can use it to move money on a Saturday morning. How do you move a hundred million dollars on a Saturday morning from London to Tokyo, right? H how do I put money on an iPhone or an Android phone? And so when you become a technocrat, you start to see it as a, as a monetary network, just like Google's an information network or YouTube is an entertainment network or, or Facebook is a social network. And so I think I, I kind of evolved from the trader mentality to the technocrat mentality. But if you spend enough time on Bitcoin, eventually you find your way to be to stage five and stage five is Bitcoin maximalist. And I define Bitcoin maximalist as someone that thinks that Bitcoin is an instrument of economic empowerment. I mean, I think Jack Dorsey stated that most eloquently and first, he said, Bitcoin is an instrument of economic empowerment. So it's not, not that far, you know, once you say it's a, it's a digital asset that runs on a smartphone, the very next thing that follows is, wow, um, I can give a bank to 8 billion people and I can give property rights to 8 billion people all they got to have is a $50 Android phone and uh, download an app. It'll take about 60 seconds. We have the ability uh, to give property rights to 8 billion people. We have the ability to deploy a digital monetary network to 8 billion people. We can, uh, we can give it as a gift to the world, just like giving them steel, electricity, fire, math, right? Uh, water clean air, right? So I, I would say that, you know, I, I didn't have a need for Bitcoin in February of 2020. In March of 2020, I had a need, right? That was a catalyst. You stumble around and you discover digital gold a la Bitcoin. And uh, we entered the market in August as traders. 
we evolved into technocrats as we started to appreciate the power of, of the protocol. And uh, eventually you graduate to maximalist when you realize that it's, it's not just a good technical idea. It's an, a, it's an essential entitlement to the human race. And so I, I would say now, I just, uh, I view my role as maximal as what I want. And, and I don't get caught up in all the other definitions of maximalist and what, what do people think that means. If you believe that Bitcoin is a technology to give property rights to 8 billion people, and if you believe that property rights are a good thing and freedom is a good thing and sovereignty is a good thing, then you're a maximalist. And now you're just gonna try to figure out how to spread the network to as many people as possible in any way possible. Meanwhile, Michael Saylor has responded to the tax fraud allegations brought against him by the District of Columbia. Last week, Attorney General Carl Racine tweeted that the district was suing the billionaire tech executive who has lived in the district for more than a decade, but has never paid any DC income taxes. We're also suing his company, MicroStrategy, for conspiring to help him evade taxes he legally owes on hundreds of millions of dollars he's earned while living in DC, the Attorney General tweeted on Wednesday. In response, Saylor said, A decade ago, I bought a historic house in Miami Beach and moved my home there from Virginia. Although MicroStrategy is based in Virginia, Florida is where I live, vote, and have reported for jury duty, and it is at the center of my personal and family life. I respectfully disagree with the position of the District of Columbia and look for Ward to a fair resolution in the courts. MicroStrategy also looks for Ward to defending itself aggressively against the conspiracy claims against it. The case is a personal tax matter involving Mish Saylor, the software firm noted in a statement. The company was not responsible for his day-to-day -day affairs and did not oversee his individual tax responsibilities. Nor did the company conspire with Mish Saylor in the discharge of his personal tax responsibilities. The District of Columbia's claims against the company are false and we will defend aggressively against this overreach. What do you think about Michael Saylor's interview and the charges against him? Please drop your comments and observations below and don't forget to hit the like button. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.